The Health Minister, David Clark, has been listening to that. Um, uh, last week we spoke to midwives. They were doing a Dear David campaign, uh, obviously directed directly to the uh, minister. The midwives we spoke to then told us they're underpaid, overworked and exhausted. Some said that uh, after accounting for petrol car expenses and clinic rent, they were paid just over $7 an hour. And some said they were leaving the workforce because of it. Minister, are you there? I think you're in our Hamilton studio, are you? John, I'm in your Hamilton studio. How are you? Yeah, bloody good. That sound quality is fantastic. By golly, we'll have to get ministers into studios more often. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, where are we at? The New Zealand College of Midwives is in uh, mediation negotiations, I think, with the Ministry and Crown. That actually started with the previous government, didn't it? Where is that at? It did, it did, John. Um, look, I, I want to say up front to start with that uh, I accept we've got a problem here. Um, too many of our midwives feel stretched beyond capacity. Um, it is a problem that we've inherited, you're right. Um, you know, it, hard to put too fine a point on it, we have inherited a mess. Um, it is an issue I'm taking seriously. I am listening to what the midwives are saying. They've, I could hardly avoid them. They've been sticking notes all over my office. Um, it, this is not um, just a matter of pay. It's actually about the sustainability of the model and the, the run-on you had there in the beginning uh, highlights the issue. In Australia, the model for midwives is quite different and the model we have here um, is putting midwives in a position where many of them experience professional isolation, burnout and attrition. Where we are losing those quality people, uh, something is fundamentally wrong and right, I think what, what, we have to address the right, whole what, system. What is most wrong with the model? I think lots of our listeners last week when we first started telling the story were surprised that a midwife is paid a lump sum for all pregnancy and postpartum care. In other words, they don't get an hourly rate. So right. if uh, if uh, a pregnancy is highly complicated and, and, and the mum-to-be requires a lot of visits, they don't get any more than if actually the mum is on baby number seven and just cruises through like a pro. <laughs> That's and, right. And so this is a system which leads inevitably to midwives not earning what they're worth, doesn't it? Well, yeah, and it, as you say, it's hard to estimate what the average pay rate for self-employed midwives is as it depends on the number of cases they handle, business overheads, travel, all of those kinds of things. Um, and but what we can say is that when we look at what DHB midwives are paid, that there is a disparity there. So a DHB midwife with, say, five years' experience is paid around 67000 plus allowances, plus penal rates. A senior DHB midwife in a position of responsibility could earn up to $120,000. And those who are the working in the community, the independent midwives, their pay rates under Section 88 have not kept up. Okay, so what has to change? I think you're already answering the question implicitly there, aren't you? Well, um, you know, in the short term, I am working on an urgent response in the May budget. Um, but, I, you know, it's, this is both short term and longer term. Yes, there is a global uh, shortage of midwives, but this is a workforce issue. It doesn't build up overnight and it's not solved overnight either. So um, I've asked for advice from the ministry on how we do that. The, the co-design process that they have done uh, the advice I've received is that it hasn't really dug into the broader safety issue adequately. So I'm, I'm actually going to ask the Director General, um, four weeks into the job, the new the new Acting Director General, uh, to make it a priority for him to meet with the College of Midwives uh, to have a conversation with them about how we take the process forward. OK, but at the moment what you're saying is there will be something in the May budget that responds in meaningful financial terms. Look, the, I, I won't get ahead of the budget process. There will be something in the in the budget process. It's not just a pay issue. I think the midwives will agree with that. It's about the sustainability of but the But they model. want money. They want more money, don't they? Oh, oh, absolutely, John. And, and you know, we campaigned as a government on putting more money into the health system because uh, in so many places people are stretched and have been stretched for a long time and have been working on good faith. Um, of course, we don't have the money tree. We won't solve everything in one budget. Um, but I think um, the concerns of midwives are real. Boy, there's some pressure on you, isn't there, with your with your budget? Because if we look at the uh, combined DHB debt now, it's what over it's over 170 mil, isn't it? So it's north. So that and they have made all the efficiency cuts that they're going to be able to make. Are you going to be able to find all the money you need? Mental health, midwives, you name it. Are you yeah. going to be able to write the checks you want to write? Look, it, obviously we won't be able to sort everything in the first budget, and that that will be obvious to everybody. But I think New Zealanders will understand that. They'll understand that we are putting a priority on building a public health system New Zealanders can be proud of, and that that will take time. But we, you know, I'm personally committed to doing that. OK, it's going to be absolutely fascinating. Are you going to be able to honour election promises around vote health? 
yes, we will uh, honour the promises that we made, the, the speech from the throne that the, the, the government uh, made, uh, that the Prime Minister made on behalf of the government and the coalition agreement and the confidence and supply agreements are the basis of the government. Those promises that were outlined in those three uh, areas are the things that we will deliver in our first term. OK, thanks, Minister. And one final message to midwives who are listening tonight and the thousands of people who have contacted us in support of them. Oh, from me. Sorry, John, I thought you no, were about no, to give no, the message. No, 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 no. <laughs> My apologies. You, you, um, you're the message, man. Yes, I'm the question. Absolutely. Um, no, the message for me is that, that I'm listening and I'm taking their concerns seriously. I don't want to dwell on the mistakes of the past, and there are many. Uh, I accept that um, it is my responsibility to deal with the mess that we've got, and I'm personally committed to sorting it out. Uh, Health Minister David Clark beaming and rather uh, a bit, with a crystal clear audio quality from our Hamilton studio. Thank you for joining us.